Bonjour mes amis, bienvenue à Parlons Français. Hi friends, welcome back. It's great to see you today on Let's Speak French. I'm really excited about what we're going to cover today because I feel it's going to really help you move forward and progress. Hope you've been practicing and speaking French all the time. So we're going to start today with a little review of what we ended up with the last time we were together. And that is just a little review of some of those words in context. We're not going to go back over uh, the words that we learned because we were able to go over those again for the second time at the end of the last class. But what I do want to do <clears throat> is to put a few of our pictures back up that we used last time together. We were together and just once again hash out some of those questions really quick. So here's a, here again are our friends at the bank. And uh, remember the question was, les copains sont dans la banque? Les copains sont dans la banque? All right. And then how did we answer that before? Well, obviously, we know the answer is no. We said the friends are in front of the bank. So what was that? Les copains sont devant la banque. All right. All right. We're going to do two more just to kind of get it back in our heads a little bit. So here was that table that we saw last time and, and it had a hat with it. And so the question was, le chapeau est sous la table? Le chapeau est sous la table? <clears throat> and of course we say no. And the hat is actually on the table, not under it. So le chapeau est sur la table? Le chapeau est sur la table? And that's where it really, your pronunciation really becomes important because we hear the word sous and we hear the word sur and they're pretty close, but that pronunciation of pushing the U forward on on, sur, and sous really makes a difference. Okay. Now, next one, the last one we're going to do, here's our house again, and we have that bike out there again. And so the question was, ton vélo est derrière la maison? Ton vélo est derrière la maison? And of course, we know the answer is non, but it is where? All right, it's in front of ton, mon vélo est devant la maison. Mon vélo est devant la maison. All right, I know you got those right. I know you're understanding it. It's great. I hope you're really, really getting those words down and bringing them into your conversation. Now, today, we're going to add colors and some other adjectives that will just really help us fill in some gaps, okay? So get your cahier ready and your stylo or your crayon. Now, you know, we didn't mention stylo when we talked about classroom objects, but it's S-T-Y-L-O, le stylo. That's our pen. We did learn crayon, which is our pencil, but now we can just throw stylo in there also. So I hope you have your crayon ou ton stylo et le cahier or ton cahier. And let's go into some colors. Now, the first thing we want to do is put the phrase on the board. That means what color is. <clears throat> now, we're going to use this two different ways, but let's just start with the basics. We say what color is by saying of what color. We say de quelle couleur. Now, couleur is feminine, so when we say quelle, we're going to use the feminine form, which is Q-U-E-L-L-E. So we're saying, de quelle couleur? All right, <clears throat> that just means what color. Now, usually when we say what color, we usually say what color is or what color are. So let's get those down. I bet you can guess. Now, if you're looking at the chart with the verb, um, I think we use être, the very beginning. Let's take that one, the verb être. We'll use it for colors as well. Um, we put it on a chart, and when you go to the bottom right and the bottom left, you're going to see uh, the verb « est » and « son ».« Est » and « son ». Now, we use those for « it » or objects, « they ». Because when we say he or she, it's the same thing as saying « it ». And you remember before in one of our classes, we talked about how « il » means he, but it can also mean « it ». And el means she, but it can also mean it. And il, I-L-S, means they, people, or it can mean they, objects. And el, 
means they just girls, or it can also mean objects that are feminine. All right. So because those mean it and they, talking about objects, we're going to use those verbs. Makes sense. We do this in English. We say it is. We use is the same as he is, she is, and they are. We use are the same as they are, people and objects. Okay. So what color is? <clears throat> De quelle couleur est? I'm going to use that if I'm asking you what color is something singular. Okay, what color is um, that house or what color is your car that you just bought? Okay, now I'm going to change that to son when I want to say what color are something plural. So it's going to look like this. De quelle couleur sont? De quelle couleur sont? Now let's use it in context. So... What color is your shirt? De quelle couleur est ta chemise? De quelle couleur est ta chemise? What color are your shoes? De quelle couleur sont tes chaussures? De quelle couleur sont tes chaussures? So we're using those just for plural and singular. The only difference is est and sont. Now that you know how to ask what color something is, no matter what it is, let's get into some colors. Now, I'm going to give you two different versions of a lot of these colors, and can you guess why? You probably can because it's masculine and feminine. Well, we're not talking about nouns, so why are we talking about masculine and feminine? The reason is, in most Romance languages, Spanish, French, Portuguese, Things have to agree. And so if we're talking about the color of something, the adjective describing it, if the object that we're talking about is plural, and then the color has to be plural. And if the object we're talking about is feminine, then the color has to be feminine. Everything has to match that we're talking about. The adjectives have to match their verbs. We don't do that in English, do we? But we have to do it in French. We'll see that in context later. Let's start with blue. All right, blue, all we're going to do is flip around the U and the E. And this is what you get, B-L-E-U, and we say bleu, bleu. Now, the feminine version of that, we're going to put it right under it, is bleu, and it ends with an E. We just simply put an E at the end when it's feminine. All right, now. So we have the two forms of bleu, one with an E at the end, one without. Now let's go to yellow. <clears throat> I like yellow. It's one of my favorites. Jaune. Jaune. Now we can relate this to an English word, can't we? I bet you can guess what it is, a medical term. Jaundice. Okay, we get this from our, our Latin influence in English, because English does have a heavy Latin influence. And uh, so we jaundice means that uh, it's turning yellow. We're seeing some yellowing, right? But jaune is just simply the color yellow in French. It already ends with an E. So we don't really have to change it for masculine or feminine. It's just jaune. All we have to do is change it for singular or plural. Now let's go to black. N-O-I-R is black. Now let's put it together without me saying it. How do you think it sounds? <clears throat> we know what an O-I sounds like, and we know the R is in the back. So... You guessed it, noir, noir. Now, when we make this feminine, we're going to simply put an E on the end, which makes it noir. Same thing, just has an E. All right, next one up is red. And this is going to look familiar to some of you ladies out there. The word, the word for red is rouge, rouge. Okay, remember that G is a J sound, so rouge. One of the famous places in Paris is the Moulin Rouge. I've been by it, seen it. The red windmill <clears throat> down uh, over there in Paris where it's, uh, there's a big entertainment center there. And, uh, but rouge means red. And if you're a person that wears makeup, what is rouge? We put it to make our face a little bit more red, have a little color to it, right? Okay. And now we get to gray, which is gris. 
Gris, G-R-I-S. And once again, we're going to add an E to this if it's feminine. Gris, gris. And now we get to green, which is vert, vert, and that's V-E-R-T. We have some words in English that relate to that as well. And now brown. Brown is brun, brun. That's a little bit difficult to say sometimes. Brun, put the N in your nose. And we have the feminine version, which is brune. White is blanc, blanc. Now the feminine version of this, we're actually going to add an, a, an H on it as well. Blanche, blanche. Now you've seen lots of things in English that relate to to white, something is blanched, it's white, it's cleared. Um, <clears throat> now let's go um, to a couple of words that are not colors but related, and we can kind of bring those into the same conversation. Young, we haven't learned this word yet. Young is jeune. We've seen it, and we've talked about it, but we haven't officially learned it. Jeune means young, and remember we've, we've seen the word jeune fille, young girl. That's where we use for a girl, all right? So jeune, actually now we know it means young. And this one, joli, joli, which means pretty. And if we're going to make that feminine, guess what we do? Exactly, we put an E on it. Now let's go to easy and difficult. This word, facile, facile, which is easy and difficult. Difficile, difficile, possible, going to look just the same, possible and impossible, look just the same as they do in English, but we're going to say it a little different, aren't we? Okay, so possible, 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 and impossible, 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 and we say that is, c'est, c'est impossible, that's impossible, or C'est possible. That is possible. Two more we're going to do in this quick set of words. Riche, riche, which means rich, and pauvre, pauvre, which means poor. Now, I think we've got enough new words for now. We're going to try to put these into context for you and look at them in sentences. Let's look at this one. Le maillot est rouge. Le maillot est rouge. What does that mean? You guessed that the bathing suit is red. The bathing suit, bathing suit is red. Now, to really enforce what we've been talking about grammar-wise with the plural and masculine and feminine, let's look at this sentence, the same one, plural. Les maillots sont rouges. Les maillots sont rouges. Notice that we've changed is to are. And now red is plural because mayo is now plural. And also the word the becomes plural. Everything changes to plural. All right, let's look at this one. La robe est rouge. La robe est rouge. The what? The dress is red. Okay, the dress is red. <clears throat> now let's change it to the dresses are red. I want to give you a second to think about this. Les robes sont rouges. Les robes sont rouges. Notice that V becomes plural. Dress becomes dresses, plural. We say sont instead of est, are instead of is. And rouge, red, also becomes plural as well. And let's use a different color just to get a little extra practice in, okay? So this sentence here, le maillot est noir. Le maillot est noir. The bathing suit is black. All right, let's change it to plural. Think about it. Les maillots sont noirs. Les maillots sont noirs. Now let's look at the dress because dress is feminine. It gives us another context visual here. La robe est noire. La robe est noire. Now notice we're back to singular, but noir now has an E on it. Why? 
because dress is feminine. There you go. Now let's make it plural. Les robes sont noires. Les robes sont noires. La becomes les, robe has an S, a becomes son, noir takes an S as well. So it all matches together. We're going to try one more. Let's talk about the hat. Let's talk about somebody's hat. Le chapeau est joli. Le chapeau est joli. What does that mean? The hat is pretty. All right. Now, notice that le chapeau is masculine, so it only says joli with no E. Now, let's make it plural. Le chapeau. All right. And what do we have to add to chapeau to make it plural? Not an S. Because it ends in E-A-U, we have to put an X. Le chapeau sont joli. And we add an S to joli. Okay. And why don't we do one more with joli with something feminine really quick. La jupe, the skirt, la jupe est jolie. Now joli has an E because jupe is feminine. And let's make it plural. You got it. Les jupes sont jolies. All right. Great job, friends. Very good. I know you're starting to really put all this together. Now, guys, I want to have you do some, uh, some question and answers and just to put things into context again. I want you to respond with a new phrase this time. So we're going to uh, ask ourselves some questions and we're going to respond with a phrase that I'm going to give you right now. This one. It's going to look a little familiar, but a little different. N'est-ce pas? N'est-ce pas? Now, you've seen the E, ce, the E-S-T dash C-E. You've seen it in est-ce que, qu'est-ce que, qu'est-ce qui. Now, it's n'est-ce pas. We just take out a little part of that. What do you think this means? If I say n'est-ce pas at the end of a sentence, that's asking you to affirm that it's true. It's saying, isn't it? Aren't they? Aren't you? Isn't he? Aren't we? Any of those sentences that you say right to, asking someone to, to you know, reaffirm something. So that's what n'est-ce pas does. Let's do an example really quick. Now, this sentence talks about the boards, okay? De quelle couleur sont les tableaux? Oh, there's that X again because it ends in E-A-U. De quelle couleur sont les tableaux? Now, I'm going to answer. They are black, right? Okay. Ils sont noirs, n'est-ce pas? Ils sont noirs, n'est-ce pas? Okay, so that's kind of what we're going to do. Now, next question, next, uh, question we're going to ask is this one. De quelle couleur sont les bateaux? De quelle couleur sont les bateaux? Now, I want you to put that answer together, but this time... Say they're red, aren't they? They are red, aren't they? All right, think about that. <clears throat> All right, here's our answer. De quelle couleur sont les bateaux? Uh, ils sont rouges, n'est-ce pas? Ils sont rouges, n'est-ce pas? They're red, right? All right, very good. Now, next one. De quelle couleur sont les robes? De quelle couleur sont les robes? What color are the dresses? Again, let's say they're red. Aren't they? Put it all together. Ils sont rouges, n'est-ce pas? Elles sont rouges, n'est-ce pas? Okay, so they is elle because le robe is feminine. All right, another one. De quelle couleur sont les velos? De quelle couleur sont Les vélos. What color are the bicycles? I want you to say, they're black, aren't they? They're black, aren't they? Think about that. All right. Ils sont noirs, n'est-ce pas? Ils sont noirs, n'est-ce pas? Remember, noir is just going to have N-O-I-R-S because it's masculine. So we only put the S on it for the plural. All right, next one. De quelle couleur sont les feuilles? De quelle couleur sont les feuilles? What color are the leaves? 
Now we'll pretend it's fall right now and ask ourselves, what color are the leaves? Well, let's say they're red. All right. Elle, because les feuilles is feminine. Elles sont rouges, n'est-ce pas? Elles sont rouges, n'est-ce pas? Let's do one with car. We haven't used car yet in this one. De quelle couleur sont les voitures? De quelle couleur sont les voitures? Now, I want you to say they are blue, aren't they? Remember, cars are feminine. All right. Elles sont bleues, n'est-ce pas? Elles sont bleues, n'est-ce pas? Now, let's look at the word bleu. It, it was B L. E-U, we added an E to it because it's feminine, and we added that S because it's plural. So now it all agrees. <clears throat> all right. De quelle couleur sont les motos? De quelle couleur sont les motos? Now let's say they're green, aren't they? They are green, aren't they? All right, last one. Think about this one. Okay, L E L L E S because they're feminine. Elles sont vertes, n'est-ce pas? Elles sont vertes, n'est-ce pas? All right. Great job putting those together. Time to really bring in those uh, colors into your conversation and now bring in n'est-ce pas? If you're speaking with somebody, start asking them questions and say n'est-ce pas? Right? All right. That's great. You may even have already heard that in a conversation. Okay, friends. Next up, in the last part of our class today, we're going to add some more regular ER verbs. Before, in our previous class, one of those I told you that you can go as fast as you want. You may have already learned some of these ER verbs, but I want to give them to you just in case you haven't. And these will open up more. All you got to do is apply the same endings, the same pattern to these. And now you can say a whole bunch of new things. All right. This first verb is apporter, apporter. Now, this one means to bring. Remember when the ER is still on it, it literally means to bring. So if I were going to say, I'm going to bring, I would use apporter exactly like that. We'll be talking about the future tense later on. <clears throat> now, the next one is to arrive, which is arriver, arriver. That means to arrive. Now, the next one means to ask, or it can also, it really means to ask for. You don't need to say this verb and then put for after it. So the verb is demander, demander. So je demande, I'm asking for something. To go in, to enter, entrer dans, entrer dans. I put the word dans there because it's typically used when you're saying you're going in or entering in somewhere, entrer dans. To close is fermer, fermer. To live, habiter, habiter. Now, what would we do if we were conjugating habiter with je? It starts with H, which we treat as a vowel. So J would become apostrophe. J'habite, j'habite. To show is this one, montrer. I'm going to show you this verb, montrer. All right, je vais montrer. Je vais montrer. All right, to show is montrer. To open is ouvrir. Ouvrir. I just want to make a quick mental note. Later on, we're going to learn some verbs that end with IR. And they're going to follow a different pattern. But just go ahead and put in your in little mental note there, in your notes, in your cahier that ouvrir follows the same endings as ER verbs, even though it's an IR, okay? Talk about that a little later. <clears throat> to wear is porter. You can say to wear, and that is porter. To return to, I'm going to give you return to and return from, because uh, we use a different word after rentrer to, spe to specify whether I'm returning to or returning from. So return to is this, rentrer. Ah, and that really makes sense because ah means at or to. Rentrer ah, and return from. Rentrer de. 
rentrer de. And it really makes common sense as well. Return from or of. To stay is this one, rester. I'm going to stay here. I'm going to remain here. I would use rester, that verb. To look at something or to watch is regarder. Regarder. And finally, let's do one more. Travailler. Travailler means to work. To work. Now, really quick, let's look at a couple of these in context. First, uh, let's use écouter, to listen to. J'écoute la radio. J'écoute la radio. Écouter means listen. I've used that word before with you. And j'écoute la radio becomes J apostrophe because of the vowel that began. Now, I'm listening to the teacher, je, or I'm watching the teacher, I should say. Je regarde le professeur. Je regarde le professeur. Now, I'm asking for the cards. Je demande les cartes. Je demande les cartes. Now, I enter into the museum. J'entre dans le musée. J'entre dans le musée. One more. I'm showing the car to Jean. Je montre la voiture à Jean. Je montre la voiture à Jean. Okay, that gives you a couple of examples to go on. I encourage you, between now and the next time we're together, to look up some ER verbs of your own. Bring them into your conversation and make sentences with those on your own. Come up with all kinds of sentences and questions that you can ask. Bring in Nespa. All right, keep practicing, friends. I look forward to seeing you during our next class of Parlons Français.